Blam, 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 blam. Hi everyone, Read Any Books, Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Jane Remover album, Census Designated. This is a new LP from prolific singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and producer Jane Remover, following up her 2021 album, Frailty, which was a bit of a digital glitchy noise pop triumph, a versatile blend of underground music styles coming together in a way that was raw and personal, but also also broadly representative of an overwhelming online world. Especially considering how many radical sonic and stylistic switch-ups a single song may undergo on this record within four to six minutes. And the successor to Frailty, Census Designated, is also pretty overwhelming too, but in a different sense. This LP isn't hitting you with a lot of fast-moving information all at once, kind of the opposite. The pacing of these tracks is uh, very much within a slow to medium range, which is pretty key to the mix of genres she is delivering here. Now, for fans who might be worried about too much change on this LP, I think noisy, homespun, glitchy, emo-tinged ballads are still very much at the foundation of what Remover does, but now things are being slowed down to make room for these massive, crushing walls of guitar distortion that are pretty shoegazy and sometimes laced with ear-piercing feedback, which makes Census Designated a much more monolithic experience, as some parts of it feel like I'm withstanding hurricane force winds. And I will say my biggest issue with Frailty does get smoothed out on this record, as I did think a lot of the vocal ranges and performances on that record were kind of one-dimensional and limited. All the vocal manipulations weren't exactly helping the more intimate passages of the record either. However, the vocal performances on this new LP are a lot better. Across the record, they are more expressive, they are more passionate, even more tender during some of the quieter moments too. However, that doesn't mean Census Designated isn't without its issues or limitations, as there are some tracks where it feels like Remover has bitten off more than she can chew. Now, I do think the record starts off pretty strong with the track Cage Girl slash Cam Girl, which is a dreamy, drony, guitar-backed tone setter that really leaves me feeling like I'm floating, all thanks to these enveloping layers of tones and the vocals hitting some entrancing highs too. Meanwhile, the song Lips comes across even more heavenly with some great vocal harmony passages, jangly, shimmering guitars that all eventually build up into a very satisfying and heavy crescendo. Tensions get raised higher with Fling, which I think is one of the more visceral cuts on the record. We get some super righteous riffs on this track, some screaming walls of distorted chords laced with some glossy vocal harmonies, some stuttering noise. So far, so good. The sound of the record is consistent, it's solid, but after a while, I think Remover's shortcomings when it comes to thicker, heavier, noisier production become clear. I'm not sure if it's a skill issue or maybe just problems inherent to uh, taking this genre of music and kind of carrying it over into the digital age, as we know that noise and distortion tends to manifest differently in a sonic sense uh, across more analog production uh, than it does digital. And I remember having at least some reservations about uh, the shoegazier sounds on the recent Yule record. So even if we are talking about two different artists with two different styles, uh, there is at least some crossover with that. But yeah, as this record draws on, unfortunately, I just don't find the walls of sound to be that interesting interesting or rich, nor are they pleasurable to listen to. The final moments of holding a leech, for example, just come across as burnt, as blown out, one-dimensional. Pretty much the same with Backseat Girl too. But what makes this track stand out is Remover's uh, very angular and bright vocal harmonies dance on top of what I want to say is a wall of guitars. But in contrast with the singing coming across as sweet as it does, it just kind of feels like <laughs> the vocals are being accompanied by a stack of white noise underneath them. Meanwhile, idling somewhere's loudest moments are combined with just this uh, ugh, destructive feedback that is uh, kind of painful to listen to. In some ways, more punishing than harsh noise albums I've heard. Cause yeah, some of the mixes on this thing are just so boiling hot that moments like Always Have Always Will with their triumphant chords and beautiful vocal passages just don't really come across as bright and as warm as the music is implying. There are moments deeper into the track list, though, where I think Remover is a bit more onto something. The hellish start to the song video works because the sounds going into it are actually quite hellish. Nor does this intro last too long. The serene ballad to follow is nice. And the very heavy final moments of the lengthy track here uh, aren't too much of a 
beat down. The title track also hits some epic and noisy highs, but it's also one of the most uh, multifaceted songs on the entire record, which is an element of frailty that I missed quite a bit on this album. And while there are pockets of the closing track that to my ears are hot lava, hot lava, I can at least hear more layers and details being laced uh, within <laughs> that searing hot sound. Still, having said that, generally, I don't think the sound play on this record is that great. I get much more pain than pleasure from it. There's just a line that this record during a lot of key moments is uh, tiptoeing over just a bit too much. There is something at least very specifically for me uh, that makes this record a very tough listen, uh, halfway through which I get a lot of ear fatigue. Whether it's on headphones, whether it's on speakers, I haven't really um, felt much of a difference. Which is why I just don't think I'm as crazy about this one as its predecessor. Even if uh, it is ambitious in some respects, even if its artistic intentions are certainly pure, I just think in terms of aesthetics and execution, it's veering off a cliff a little bit. Even if I am a fan of the genre combinations, even if there are a handful of tracks on it that I did like and was able to enjoy, I'm feeling a strong six on this new LP. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Jane Remover, the forever.